We all want to create apps that everyone wants to use. We want our apps to be used over and over again, almost addictive. I'm Michael Schroeder, an evangelist at Microsoft, and I want to help you create an app that will draw your users back into it again and again. You've just learned about Metro style design and how to apply it to Windows 8 apps. You've also learned about the basics of creating user experiences with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Now I'm going to show you how to make your app alive with activity on Windows 8. You'll be giving your app a live tile, roaming its settings to the cloud, and making it responsive to the app's process lifecycle. Once your customers download your app from the Windows Store, the first thing that they see is its tile. As you've tried out Windows 8, you've probably noticed that some of the tiles are updating with pictures and information. Now you want to make your app's live tile alive with activity so that users are enticed to go back into your app. There are four ways to update your tile, three of which don't even need your app to be running. You can enable push notification, you can use a background task, you can update your tile from a website or service, or you can update your tile from your app. The Windows Runtime gives you a library of 46 different pre-designed templates for both wide and square tiles to choose from, so you can queue up a variety of tile updates as well. You don't have to spend time designing these tiles. You just focus on the ones you want to use and what pictures and information should go into them. In addition to the main tile, your app can support secondary tiles for any type of content in your app. If you anticipate that users will be interested in particular parts of your app, like video series or conversation thread, then you can make the separate live tiles out of that content so they can follow them directly. You would want to use push notification if you want external events from a web service to trigger a tile update or a toast notification. An example of this is being notified that someone sent you a message in an app or an article that you were following just got commented on. You do need to create a service on a website or in the cloud that interacts with the Microsoft push notification service. There are great samples of how you can create a push notification service on Windows Azure. If you want everyone who has your app to get the same tile update, then you should look to set up a periodic tile update for your tile or secondary tile. Host a small XML file that defines the tile in a web server, and the app will periodically check that location to see if the XML has changed. And if so, the tile will update. A news app, for example, would use this periodic update to send headlines to the live tile. Keep in mind that periodic updates are only for live tiles, not toast notifications. If you don't want to set up a server, but still want your live tile to update periodically, then you'd use a background task to do a series of activities on a regular basis. You can configure a background task to execute code that may check a website, store data in your local storage, and then update a live tile or show a toast notification. Background tasks can be triggered at regular intervals or at certain system events, like when network connectivity is restored. I've used background tasks in an app where I needed to get the latest version of a file from SkyDrive, check to see if it had changed, and then if it had, update the tile and show a toast notification. Here's a tip. The user has the ability to enable up to seven background tasks that are shown on the lock screen with the timer trigger. These tasks will run even if the system is on battery power. If you don't need to show your app on the lock screen, then use the maintenance trigger instead, which will only run when on AC power. The last way to update your live tile is directly in your app. This would be useful, for example, in a movie app where the live tile might show the scene in the movie that a user is currently watching. One more tip for live tile updates. Include both square and wide tile definitions in your tile update, as users may make your app's tile either size. I mentioned that a background task might download data from the web, then store it locally. You can also use the background downloader to do this. This would help your app be fast and fluid, showing recent data as soon as it's activated. Here's how you should think about data and file storage. As most apps store some amount of data, Windows 8 makes it easy to store data in local storage, roaming storage, or in the user's file system. Each Metro-style app has its own application data directory that can be used for app-specific data. This is also where your background task or background downloader would cache its data so your app feels fast and fluid, having the most recent data right on startup. And for user information like passwords, it's a good idea to store credentials in the password vault. Roaming storage is just like local storage, but will automatically replicate user data among the various Windows 8 systems a user has. Using the roaming storage enables you to do single sign-on for your app and provides seamless experiences across devices. A list of favorites in an app, or the place where a person pauses a movie, are both great uses for roaming storage. In this way, users can pause a movie on one device and resume it on another. Once you start using roaming storage, make sure to handle the application data data changed event so you know when roaming data has been synchronized. 
If you want to access the user's music, documents, photos, or video libraries, you'll need to declare that in the app manifest. The Windows Runtime provides direct metadata access to the content in these libraries. So for example, it's very easy to get information about music in the user's library by just looking at the files, album, and artist properties. Check out the music properties, image properties, photo properties, and video properties in the file information class. Adding a live tile and caching downloaded data in the background will do a great deal to make your app alive with activity. And once your user clicks on your app's tile, you'll want to start up your app quickly. Understanding the app's process lifecycle will also help you do this. A common tenet of Windows 8 Metro-style apps is that system resources like memory and processor usage are prioritized towards the Metro-style app in the foreground. The system suspends apps whenever the user switches away from them to another app or the desktop. Also, as system resources get pushed, suspended apps that haven't been used in a while are terminated. Developing with this life cycle in mind is key to understanding how to create a great Metro-style app. This means that you should save app state data often so that your app will suspend quickly. If it takes too long to suspend, then it might not pass certification. Now you're going to start taking advantage of the Windows runtime. You'll have a great live tile that draws your users back into your app. Your app will roam its data to the cloud. Your app will suspend and resume quickly. Remember to check the daily tips in the Windows Dev Center website for deeper information on making a great Windows 8 app. Your app is going to shine on Windows 8.